Welcome back guys in this video we are going to solve another problem from hacker and data structures uh, it's an easy problem it's called 2d array and ds stands for data structure so let's solve this problem so here you can see the problem that we are given so let's take this problem and understand what they want from us so here's the problem so make sure you read the question properly so it can be easy for you to understand the things so first of all they have provided that given a 6 by 6 2d array so they have made uh, the size as constant so you either can uh, store the size in a variable or you can directly make use of this 6 as the size of this array so size is fixed now given question is that you have been given a 2d array like this and you have to found the sum of r glasses so i hope you know what is an r glass you must have seen some you must have seen r glass of this form right it has sand and it is used to calculate the time right you must have seen this and this is the shape of an r glass so we have to find all the r glasses that we can get from this array and then we have to sum those uh, values of the r glasses and then in this array we can have many r glasses so we just have to uh, return the maximum sum that we can get from the r glass right i hope you get it if you doesn't get uh, don't worry we are going to check it again i'm going to explain it again so here you can read it that an R glass A is a subset of values with indices falling in this pattern of array graphical representation, right? So if we have this array, we can see that we have, we can have an R glass of this, right? We can have these values inside one R glass. And if you see the sum of this R glass is 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is 3, then 1, 1 is here and another 3 ones are here. So the total of 7, it forms, right? So this R glass forms a value of a sum of 7, right? Then we can have another R glass. Uh, let me just... We can have another R glass starting from here moves till here then goes here then here and it takes these values and here is the another R glass right so if you sum these values you will get 1 plus 1 plus 0 that is 2 then 1 plus 1 plus 0 that is 2 again 2 and 2 4 and this 0 that is 4 so using this R glass we get a sum of 4 uh, which is less than the previous one that was 7 right so we can have number of R glasses and we have to find the maximum sum that we can get, right? So there are a few observations that you can form from here. And what are those observations? Let's see. First of all, they have written that there are 16 R glasses in this array, right? So since if the value of or the size of array is 6 by 6, then you can have 16 R glasses. So let's see whether they are right or wrong, right? And then R glass sum is the sum of the R glass values, right? Calculate the R glass sum of every R glass in array and then print the maximum R glass sum. So let's see the number of R glasses that we can get from this. So let's take another example. And here it is again of size six by six, you can check there are six rows and six columns so it's of six by six and now you have to understand one thing that for an R glass you need three values in a row right and then one in next row and then again you need three values so it requires three rows and three columns right so it requires and 2d array of 3 by 3 to form an r glass so let's check all the 3 by 3 
arrays we can get from this so first 3 by 3 array we can have is this so from here we can form one arc glass right so what is that arc glass uh, which consists of this minus 9 minus 9 minus 9 right it goes like this and then it goes here and then again it comes out and here so this is an R glass that we get from this 3 by 3 array right another 3 by 3 array that we can get is this right this is an another 3 by 3 array that we can get another 3 by 3 array that we can get is this it can be overlapping so don't worry they haven't mentioned that we cannot use it so we can overlap the 3 by 3 array another 3 by 3 array that we can get is this one now you have seen one more thing that you need three columns right that's why after this you can cannot start another you cannot start another R glass from here because it requires three columns but you have only two columns after it, right one and then two you need one more column to form an R glass so you cannot you cannot create this R glass or this you cannot use the three by three array right so the last so the last three by three array you are going to use is starts from here and which is 6 minus 2 right you can see first second third and fourth row you can only create uh, an hourglass starting from the fourth row and not after that right and if you're using index from uh, 0 you can just subtract 1 from 4 that is 3 so you can use R glasses from 0 to index till 3. You can have 0, 1, 2, and 3. This comes at three, third index, right? So this is about the column. What about rows, right? Again, you can see it requires three rows to form an R glass. Then you can start from here and use next three rows. Then you can start from here and use next three rows, right? But now you see that when you reaches over here you can create the R glass consisting of these three rows but if you reach over here you cannot start another R glass why because you again need three rows but you have just two rows and you cannot move out of this 2D array so at max you can start from here right so again this row is fourth row and it again comes from the number of rows minus two that is 4 right and the last index that you are going to use is minus 1 equals to 3 right if you are using starting index is 0 so this is this is, these are some observations that you can make and again I'm saying you can either use direct 6 as the size of the array or you can just uh, store in a variable let's call R where it stores uh, rows and then see where it starts where it stores column right so a row can have uh, array dot size so you can store like that or you can directly use six because the length uh, of the rows and columns are constant so now comes how you can solve this problem so now you have to see one thing that the L values are at relatively fixed positions so if you start at here you just need to add one and you will get another value then you just need to add one to the row and you will get another value and then you just need to add one to the row and then and one to the column that is here you will get this value and then you need to add one to the row and then you need to get this value right then add one to the column you will get this value then you add one to the column you get another value so it is a fixed uh, relatively fixed value right so you can create a formula right you can create a formula so if your current i is at zero that is let's say row is at zero and column is at zero you just uh, have a sum from array consisting of row column that is zero zero 
then you can add array row column plus one that is next value this one then you can add array row column plus two right then you can have value array r plus one that is we move to next row we move to next row and and column will be c plus one why because as of now c is zero right and when you add one it becomes one and now this array r plus one which is zero plus one one and c plus one that is zero plus one that is one array of one and one is minus nine right now you have to add array r plus 2 and column that is third row and first column then array r plus 2 column plus 1 and array r plus 2 column plus 2 right so this gives us the sum of the R glass if we start our R glass from this 0 0 now again you can use same formula to have an R glass starting with this 0 and 1 index right so now you just all you need to do is just update R and C and that can be easily done by using a for loop or 2d for loop right so when r is 0 and column is at 1 you can get the sum of the r glass that is starting from the row 0 and column 1 which is this one right again you can have column 2 which is which will give you sum with r 0 that is 0th row and column 2 which one is which is to this one right and then you can have 3 as the c or which is column so you can get the R glass which starts from here. But now you have to stop, right? You cannot get an R glass starting from here. You know that why, right? You need three at least three columns to make an R glass. So you cannot start from here. So you have a restriction, right? So whenever you are using for loop, you have to make sure that your loop runs from zero and it stops at three. And you can write that equals to or greater than four right so this can be used in the code so you have to restrict when you need to stop and uh, similarly you have to restrict the rows right at the last row you have to use is this one which is again three and rows can be right inside this right for j equals to zero and j is less than four j plus plus and inside this you can sum and here you will use all of these values so you can use this sum formula over here right and now what happens is you are going to store the max value so what I suggest you now to have a max value over here and store a minimum value of integer right integer dot main value so store min value at max and after you find the sum you can just check if this sum is greater than this max value you just update the max value you can update the max value so this will give you the maximum sum that you can get from the R glass. After that you can do whatever you can just print the maximum or return the maximum whatever the question asks you. Right so this is the gist that you need to do over here and I hope now the code becomes more easy for you to, to understand. So let's quickly write this code right. So here's the method that you need to complete it's called R glass sum. And you can see here I am using Java 7 as of now. In this method, they are providing us list of list of integers, which shows that it's an 2D array and it is returning integer, which will be the maximum sum of the R glasses of all the R glasses that we will found. Let's start the code. So first of all, so it's on you whether you want to store 
values of number of rows and number of columns or otherwise they have already given us that it's going to be a six by six matrix so let's store it uh, and generalize this so r is going to be array dot size so let's column b array dot get first row and what's the size of that will be written so now we have rows and column now let's make use of for loop i will run from 0 to r minus 2 i hope you understand why i'm using r minus 2 since here we saw that since the row is 6 and at max we can just use fourth column to make a fourth column as a starting index of the r glass right so that's why we i am subtracting 2 from this and then i just need to increment this so this shows the number of columns we can use right as the first index i'm talking about this right so now inside we need to mention the rows we can use that is from 0 till okay it should be c minus 2 because it's the column now inside this we need to mention r minus 2 the number of rows that we can use and we just have to understand the concept that i and j are the possible or the candidates that can be the starting index of our r class right so this shows the rows so every time you are inside this for loop so you will be having an i value and j value that will be the indices of the 2d array and from where you can start making your r glass so right inside this you can have a variable sum which you can initialize to zero now you can have you have to understand why i am initializing this inside you can have it right here right you can also have some outside the for loop but there is a reason that why i am initializing it to zero inside here because every time you are inside this for loop uh, inside this inner for loop so you are saying that now i am in a new position new starting position and right here i am going to calculate a new sum of the r glass possible right so that's why we need to initialize it to zero every time so that we can have a new sum otherwise it will add to the previous one and one more thing we need to keep the maximum value that we have fetched so far right we need to have a max value variable and as of now we can initialize it to integer min value right we cannot have value less than min value integer min value and if we are storing that value in integer so that's why we use min value because we are trying to get the maximum value and maximum value will of course be greater than the any integer min value so let me tell you one more thing suppose we initialize this max value to zero and we are asked to find the maximum value so what if all the a values in the array are negative and we are asked and we try to find that if uh, any value is greater than our max value what will happen is that we will get no value as max value of uh, it will be just zero right and there is no value zero inside this array so that's why we try to initialize it with the minimum value possible i hope you understand what i'm trying to say i'm just trying to explain you why we use minimum value over here if you haven't under understand don't worry it will be being used in many of the problems and we will come across this many times so so right inside i have written the sum formula that we did that i that i explained over here so that's the same formula i've written here here i'm using array get i get j because it is a uh, it's an it's from the algorithm library of this java it's no, it's not an index or it's not an array so we have to use these methods as the values from the indexes so in your language you might have different way to get the value if you are using any other language apart from java so it's the same formula i'm fetching uh, value from ij then i'm adding value of i plus ij plus 1 then ij plus 2 and 
I think you understand, you must have understand why we are using this formula. I have already explained you. If you haven't, please see the video again. You will definitely understand why we have written this formula. So after this, we need to check whether this sum is greater than the max value. And if it is, we have to update the max value to, to the sum. That's it, right? So inside this, we will get the maximum value every time. So what will happen is after coming out this for loop, this outer for loop, this is the column one, right? We just have to return the max value. And that's it. Let me run this code. Congratulations guys, you got it. So I hope you have understand this. Let me submit this. Uh, all the test cases are passed and yeah if you have found it useful do like share and subscribe and if you are using any other language do share the code down in the comment section so other students can make use of it if you have if you have found any doubt do write in the comment section i will try to resolve it as soon as possible so guys this was all for this video see you next video till then keep watching keep learning